recorder is running live on Facebook. All right, do it, do it. Um, hold on one sec. My fucking email's popping up. Ain't nobody got time for that. All right, here we go. Fucking Wolfman in the house. Um, <laughs> uh, I got a little toasty before doing this. I'm not going to lie. I got to do the, I got to do the intro. Uh, here we go. And I apologize if the audio is a little muffled. Uh, if you're not watching this on the stream, uh, it is Halloween. It's the Halloween Spectacular. I have a fucking, I have a fucking wolf mask on. <laughs> Hold on. Let me do the fucking intro. <sighs> oh, I got wolf hair in my fucking mouth. <laughs> Let me do the intro. Um, trying to hurt kids by stuffing razor blades into candy bars is just plain wrong. It's much easier to smother the little shits with a pillow. If that doesn't work, then lace their pixie sticks with some strychnine, and while you wait for the poison to kick in, why not enjoy a fresh episode of the Savage Sack Tap? It's our annual Halloween Spooktacular, and it starts right now. You're listening to the Savage Sack Tap. It's not a podcast, it's not a half-cast, it's just a quick shot to the balls to help you finish off the week. We're cutting through the bullshit, filling your Friday with rage-fueled logic, and cracking a few jokes along the way. So grab a bag of frozen peas, there's a savage sack tap coming your way. Okay. Whew. It is fucking hot inside this mask. Boo! Or should I say, I'm the wolf man. I should say, ah woo! Not fucking, I don't want to howl because I'm in my uh, my apartment, my uh, my landlord's home upstairs. I'd sound like a fucking weirdo if I was just howling in the basement. But uh, yeah, boo and uh, welcome to a very, very spooky episode of the Savage Sack Tap. It is our Halloween spooktacular, boys and ghouls. Uh, I am Mike Montone, and I do have, uh, I have a little Halloween treat for you guys later on. Um, we made, uh, shot some, uh, some video content yesterday. I'll tell you all about it, uh, at the end of the show. Uh, but for now, let's get, uh, what do you say we, we go ahead and, and get spooky. Um, I have this, uh, by the way, I just ate a, uh, a robust, robust Sunday, uh, Sunday brunch. I'm not gonna lie. So, uh. Yeah, I, uh, I don't know. I hope I'm not slow. I, uh, I worked out in the park, and, uh, and I came home, and I had a bagel with lox and cream cheese, and I took the rest of the lox, and uh, I made a, um, a whatchamacallit, a fucking, I guess it was like an egg scramble, um, and I drank a beer, so uh, yeah. And uh, like I said, I puffed a little of the cheese, so I am I'm feeling good. So what I'm saying is, I might be a little... Uh, Little, uh, little fast and loose while we go through this. Hold on. How do I control this computer? Here we go. Um, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, I do. I have a uh, a love hate relationship with with Halloween because it's inspired so many great like Simpson movies and uh, or Simpsons episodes and, and, and movies and, and such. And uh, you get to go out and, and get drunk and you get to hook up with some chick who's dressed as a, a slutty janitor. Um, or whatever, uh, whatever chicks dress as these days. Um, and it is, it's a lot of, it's a lot of fun because, you know, who doesn't, who doesn't love, uh, sluts, but, um, it does, it inspires a lot of really just terrible hack shit. Like, um, you know, you know, these people who are, they're not very funny or interesting, but they're going to try to be funny for Halloween. Like, uh, they'll fucking wear a wolf mask when they're doing their podcast, um, or there's always, there's always like a lot of guys who, uh, who they just, they buy the Amazon costume of uh, a character from like a widely quoted or very popular movie. And then people treat them like they're the creative genius. Like last year, I feel like Joker was the big one because the movie had just come out and it's got that like, he's got that cool makeup. So it'd be like if people do the fucking Joker makeup, whoa, man, you got the makeup and everything. Like, all right, calm the fuck down. All right. He, he didn't write the script. He put on a. He put on red and white face paint, and it came with a prepackaged costume. Like, he literally did the bare minimum. We don't need to compliment that guy in his fucking costume. 
I feel like I, I watched the Borat movie last year. I feel like it's going to be, uh, I feel like that's going to be it this year. A lot of fucking Borats, which also means you get a bat, a, just a shitload of, uh, of awful Borat impressions on the part of guys who are tr- trying to fake a personality while trying to get laid. I'm, <laughs> I'm saying it feels, I'm fucking, <laughs> I'm laboring <laughs> through my fucking notes right now because I'm just <laughs> sitting in my own fucking basement by myself in a fucking wolf mask and I feel, <laughs> I, just, I feel like a complete fucking ass. <laughs> um, I'm so, <laughs> um, yeah, I was, I was watching Borat. There's definitely gonna be a lot of just shitty fucking Borat costumes this year. Um, and I'm, I'm so like, I'm almost glad that like I'm not in college and like the bars and shit aren't gonna be open. So there's no, there's no going out like. I mean, I guess I'm going to a uh, going to a party, but like I feel like at the bar it's even worse because like at least the party you're gonna be around at least like you know people who are friends with your friends. If you go to the bar, there's always that just there'd be that shithead who who decides to be Borat and he won't fucking shut the fuck up. Like my wife, fucking uh, Mister Vice Premier or whatever the fuck. Like I can't. No one can do a good Borat. Everyone's Borat impression sucks. If you could do a good Borat, you would you would be you would be him. You would be Sasha Baron Cohen. Instead, you're not. You're a you're a fucking jerk off. You work in finance and you wear a uh, you wear a vest over your button down shirt to work with uh, with khakis and you don't have a fucking personality. So you're gonna dress as fucking you're gonna dress as Borat and do an impression to try to get laid. Um, there's a there's a hand sanitizer costume out this this year as well. I feel like a lot of assholes are gonna be doing that one. And they're just going to come out armed with, like, a lot of awful kind of pre-planned corona jokes to try to hook up with chicks. Like, don't worry, you know, I don't have COVID, I'm, I'm hand sanitizer, I'm totally clean. I'd accuse that, that jerk off of having HPV, but that would mean he has to get laid, and I don't, I feel like it's probably not happening. Um, yeah, Halloween is a just huge, huge holiday for guys with shit personalities trying to get laid. But more power to them, everyone. Who doesn't love a little pussy, right? Um, and speaking of, there's a uh, there's a sexy hand sanitizer one for uh, for women. I'm fine with that. I'm 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 okay with any uh, any excuse for a slutty outfit is good with me. Um, if my grandmother, I mean, they're but my grandparents have uh, have all been dead since long before coronavirus, long before uh, before man dined on bat. Um, but if my grandmother had died of coronavirus and some chick showed up at a party in a sexy coronavirus patient and it was just it was just her in like, a, you know, a pair of fishnets and heels. And then uh, she's like hooked up to a, a ventilator struggling to breathe while saying goodbye to her, her, her family through an iPad. But her, her ass is hanging out the, the back of her hospital gown. I'm like, yeah, I like that. That's a good costume. What's uh, what's your Instagram? We should get coffee. Too soon, bro. You ever meet those guys that you, you tell a bad joke and they they react with "Too soon, man." Not funny, bro. What little dick sucks? Learn to laugh, shitheads. Um, sorry. <laughs> I fucking I feel like my delivery is all off because it's legitimately difficult to breathe inside of this stupid fucking wolf mask I'm wearing. So, uh, so cut me some slack, but yeah, the, uh, the too soon, not funny bro guys are like the same kind of guy, I bet that there's probably a big overlap between those guys and guys who watch, uh, last week tonight with John Oliver, um, the same ones, they like to go with a political costume, but it's always like one of those SNL, you know, fuck Trump hacky political costumes, there's a hundred percent chance that the fly on Mike Pence's head it's going to be a, a massive costume this year. Like, any shitty joke that spreads among uh, among politically engaged Twitter, it always winds up on SNL, and then it, t- it gets turned into a Halloween costume by, uh, by jerk-offs who aren't creative enough to come up with something funny. I feel like if you could... Um, 
if you could pull off something, you want to, you want to, I don't have a problem with a political costume per se, but, um, I feel like you have to do, you have to come with something like creative and original, like, like if you went as Cuomo with huge nipples and carrying one of those like Grim Reaper sickles and you had maybe like a couple doll, like a couple, like a marionette of a couple old people and you were, you were just chasing chasing them around with your fucking massive nipples poking out through your polo shirt. I feel like that would, uh, I feel like that could be pretty funny. You could do, uh, Trump, you could reenact the, uh, the Russian bed piss thing. You could just have two blow-up dolls leaking, uh, leaking yellow fluid all over, all over Trump. You could do Jeffrey Tubin. you could walk around with your dick in one hand and, and your laptop in the other. I feel like that Biden crack pipe thing is probably going to be a uh, is going to be a big one, and that would be fun because you could bring you could bring an actual crack pipe to whatever party you're going to. You'll be the you'll be the hit of the fucking party. You'll have crack because it's Halloween, right? Even if you don't, I feel like a decent a normal decent person. If you smoke crack on Halloween, that's kind of one of those pass holidays. Like yeah, you smoke. It's like I feel like that's. Uh, if someone brings crack to a Halloween party and you take a hit, like you're not going to become a crackhead after that. It's just like, all right, you tried crack. Um, I'm, not, I'm not saying crack is for me, but I'm saying I could justify the behavior. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't frown on the behavior. Um, what else? I, RBG is going to be a big one. Um, I guess the I guess the good news is that uh, if. Uh, <laughs> If you do see a chick dressed as RBG, it's like a major green light that uh, if you uh, if you dump a load inside of her, she'll go ahead and uh, scrape it out with a coat hanger. Plus, it, I it, I feel like it could be, it would be fun, I think, to fuck a chick dressed like a slutty RGB or RBG, whatever. Fucking order. Sorry, I'm dying inside this fucking wolf mask. <laughs> um, you know. He's gonna hike up the judge's robe, wail away on her ass cheeks with the gavel. Biden may want to pack the courts, but right now all I'm worried about is packing that pussy, you know what I'm saying? Um, there are parents who will be dressing their kids as RBG, presumably their daughters, but it's, uh, it's, it's the year 2020, so I'm sure there'll be, uh, I'm sure there'll be a few, uh, you know, bi- <laughs> a few biological males dressed as uh dressed as ruth bader ginsburg um anyway <laughs> fucking i found uh <laughs> fuck this mask is killing me um uh, i found uh this website alpha mom has directions on it for uh, a ruth bader ginsburg costume as as a website called alpha mom would um, I fucking, I can't stand that shit. Is there any, just, m- moms are just one of the just biggest fucking, mo- uh, th- no one loves to make a martyr out of themselves like a fucking mother. <laughs> I mean, and I'm not, this is not an indictment of my mother, but like you always hear like, I'm a, a stay at home mom. Like, it's just like, shut the fuck up. All right. Okay. You vacuumed. Congratulations. Boo. Um, anyway, what did they say? What did, what did Alpha Mom say? Um, we couldn't resist creating a homemade Halloween costume honoring our favorite notorious judge, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She rules supreme with her trailblazing career. Her much-talked-about exercise routine, her penchant for decorative collars, and most importantly, her ongoing fight for gender equality. Who wouldn't want to be her for Halloween? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You're, so you got your toddler. You can, your toddler can dress as your favorite notorious judge. Not theirs. Yours. Uh, because this is... This is one of those things that's for the the kind of assholes who spend the day on Twitter and Facebook screaming about the orange man while failing to parent their kid. 
Um, so they're just ta you're taking you know your own hardcore uh, but relatively recently developed political beliefs and just kind of projecting them onto uh, onto a seven year old instead of just letting them dress like a, a fucking Disney princess and, and stock up on fun size Snickers, which is what shitty fucking people. This is what the, uh, so the, the costume consists of, it's a, like a, you take a black long sleeve t-shirt and they got a, a pre-made collar. Uh, you can get the large rim glasses, uh, gold studded earrings, a gavel. And uh, this is my favorite part. Attitude to spare. Like, are you fuck? Just how fucking gross and cheesy and shitty is this? Just what a what a terrible thing for parents to just dump on their fucking kids. Like seriously, shut the fuck up. Attitude to spare. Like I'm I'm pretty pro choice. Like I think you know if if you you know you accidentally you accidentally get knocked up and you want to uh, you want to flush the thing out fine be it on your head you know that's your conscience you got to do what you got to do whatever you know what I, I probably wouldn't want an unexpected little fucking rug rat running around either so i you know I'd, I'd like to keep it i'd like to keep it uh you know kind of up and open you know what i mean you know mistakes happen um but this whole fucking thing where where you're taking your political beliefs and uh and foist them onto a kid who has no fucking idea like the kid, you know, they're like the, the kids are referring to their their hero Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Um, they don't, you know, you, you got to leave that shit for them to decide. Um, you know, if my siblings had kids and dressed their daughter as R B G, then I I would feel I had no recourse but to teach the kid all about R B G, and that would include like a detailed description of of an abortion. Um, because that's what, that's what this is about, right? I don't, I feel like this doesn't have anything to do with empowerment. Um, you know, it's just white wine swilling suburban housewives who pretend that their Rodan and Fields, uh, pyramid schemes are, uh, are a legitimate form of employment. Uh, they're, they're using their kids as fodder for their Instagram accounts. Uh, it's just like the most transparently shallow move ever. But I guess if you want to play that shit, then let's play that shit. Bring your kid to my house dressed as RBG, and they will be treated to a, a great big handful of candy, as well as a pamphlet detailing, with photographs, the steps involved in uh, a late-term abortion. And then I'll close the door, and I will leave you to answer any questions uh, that they may have after perusing uh, said literature. Uh, because I feel like that should be your punishment if you dress your kid as RBG for Halloween. Um right you can it's fine you can do it but if you're going to do it you have to comfortably and in great detail explain the process by which a nearly fully developed fetus can be sucked from its mother's womb um i feel like i feel like that's the answer to to parents who uh who who psychologically abuse their kids like that um I don't think... Oh, they continue describing the costume. I don't think anyone will dare to give these judges any trick-or-treating flack. Okay, I don't know what to tell you. They're, they're going to be some older kids out stealing candy, and they're going to take everyone's M&Ms, but you think whether well, they're going to back off when they get to your little homemade Ruth Bader Ginsburg uh, costume because she was a powerful woman? Is that, is that what you think is going to happen? They're just going to fucking jack everybody's candy, but they're going to leave RPG alone? <laughs> she was a pioneer. We're not going to take her fucking Clark bar. Um, <laughs> you know what? As a matter of fact, maybe parents should send their kids out dressed as, as RBG, because then after... After she gets jacked and robbed of a few almond joys, even though you told her that she was a badass and that no one could mess with her, then you can explain to her what it's like to be a 38-year-old loser who, pro who projects her own insecurities and political obsessions uh, onto a child who just wanted to go out and have fun with her friends on Halloween. Um, anyway, the, uh, 
the point is, just let them fucking address as Ariel from, from The Little Mermaid and, and be done with it. Um, and uh, while they're out trick-or-treating, you can... Uh, you can spend a, a, a miserable evening at home uh, on Twitter calling Trump Hitler. <clears throat> ah! Sorry, boy. This is, uh, I got this hat dripping down over my fuck. I am a, this is a, what a, a terrible, uh, unprofessional, just slovenly awful, awful podcast this is today. Um, there will be... There will be adult RPGs as well, and it will be uh, it will be awesome seeing some chick in like a, a gray wig puking on her robe and crying on the sidewalk in Hoboken. And uh, and since November first is a Sunday, uh, that also means that we'll probably be seeing a, a few RBGs doing a walk of shame and heading straight into Walgreens for some uh, some Plan B. Look for that around uh, like eight nine o'clock in the morning. Um, and wouldn't that really be the ultimate tribute to, uh, to Justice Ginsburg's legacy? Um, speaking of RBG, I may be attending uh, a very woke friend's Halloween party, so I am toying uh, with some ideas for costumes that'll help me uh, fit in. I was thinking about either going, possibly going as just an Antifa member, like, uh, you know, all black, I'll carry a garbage can lit as a shield, I'll have the, the backpack... Um, and then at some point in the night, I was going to throw a brick and a Molotov cocktail, uh, through his apartment window and then kick a stranger in the face before just sprinting off into the night. Um, I was going to do either that or, uh, pff, fucking real smooth. I can't get my fucking notes going here. Ah, uh, oh boy. Uh, what else? Oh, my other, uh, yeah, I, uh, I was going to go as a, a homeless guy and take a shit in the corner before shooting up and falling asleep under a pizza box. And uh, I figured if anyone bothered me, I could just stab them and then tell them that that's what they get for disturbing uh, an unhoused person who's just trying to uh, catch some Z's. Um, and while taking a shit on the floor at your friend's party is a dickhead move, uh, it pales in comparison to the ultimate Halloween dickhead move, canceling trick-or-treating, um, which is apparently happening all over the goddamn country because everybody, uh, all these pussies are still afraid of the coronavirus. Um, oh, fuck, I gotta crack my back. Sorry, I'm, this is, so what's happening right now, if you're listening on the, uh, the audio version of this, is I have this stupid fucking wolf mask on for the, the video stream, and it's very difficult for me to see my notes, so I'm, like, leaning in at this idiotic angle and it's making my uh it's making my back cramp up um luckily we're getting to the end what the fuck am i doing here um yeah i feel like people have been kind of uh i feel like adults have been trying to crack down on on halloween and the night before halloween forever and this uh i feel like corona is just kind of a a conve you know let no let no tragedy go to waste type thing um, because when I was in elementary school, I remember you'd want to go out and get into a little mischief, and all of a sudden, I feel like around like fourth or fifth grade, maybe, the school would start sending letters home about keeping your kids in, uh, and such bullshit, and at least, I mean, that I, it was at least kind of understandable for the night before Halloween, because we'd literally be out damaging property, um, <clears throat> although I would argue that to a degree, you have to let kids engage in some of that kind of shit, um, as long as the monetary value of the damage isn't too absurd. Um, like, you know, you get caught, you egg a house, you get caught, the cops take you home, you get an ass chewing and a grounding, and uh, it's an immediate way to learn about consequences, and then it turns into uh, a hilarious family memory with the passage of time. Uh, but instead, we force kids to stay inside, and they wind up doing opioids, and they're texting each other's pictures of each other's genitals, uh, and they're cyberbullying the gay kid into suicide. Now that is spooky. Um, what was the fucking point I was, <laughs> I was making? No, the point is um, that, you know, you nerf the world, you try to protect the kids from this, and you try to, you don't want them out like, doing that, and you just wind up creating this, uh, this generation of... Uh, 
of fucking phone addicted, uh, scared of the world little fuck ups is what I'm saying. I guess I don't fucking know. I have no idea. It is very, <laughs> it is getting very hot and sweaty inside this fucking mask. Um, <laughs> they've also started doing these fucking trunk or treat. Uh, I guess they call them a, f a few years back. They, uh, the, you know, you, they park cars in a parking lot and you go to people's cars to get candy instead of going house to house. So you trick or treat out of the trunk. Um, and I mean, it sounds just fucking awful. Um, I mean, it's just, it's another element of them sucking the, the fun and the freedom and like the potential for mischief and shit out of Halloween. And if you're like me and you grew up in the, uh, the stranger danger years of the early 1990s, um, uh, it's, it's really kind of bizarre because we were always taught that approaching a stranger's vehicle in pursuit of candy was like a surefire way to get murdered and raped. But, um, yeah, I always, one of the, I think one of the reasons Halloween was like one of the best nights of the year as the, as a, as a kid is because like you would leave school like, we usually did, like, in elementary school, they'd usually, like, be like, all right, no football practice tonight, it's fucking Halloween. Um, so we'd, like, leave school, um, you know, you have all your shit with you, you bring, like, a little fucking pillowcase. Um, you don't even, you don't even need a fucking costume, you just go out, just go out in clothes, just show up, and some adults would always give you, shit, well, you gotta, you gotta have a costume, like, suck my dick, all right, just give me the fucking candy. Um, and then... By the end of the night, you'd have the full bag. And then some of the candy, you know, it sucks. Like, you know, we got fucking Werther's Original. Like, fuck off, Grandma, all right? Um, so you take all that stuff, and we would go, and we would hang out in these bushes on uh, the street called Doremus, uh, which is near, like, the, the sports fields. And uh, there was a, a big bend in the road, and, and uh, as cars would slow down coming, ba uh, coming past it, we would just nail them with hard candy, uh, it was a lot of fun, and then there was this, uh, <laughs> this is, in retrospect, this is kind of fucking dick, but, well, it's incredibly dick, but, uh, we were in fucking, I mean, I, we were in, like, fifth and, fifth or sixth grade when we did this, so we were, I guess, I'm gonna give ourselves a pass for not, you know, not knowing that it made us little pieces of shit, but, um, there was this old lady who lived around the corner from my buddy, and she would do this, instead of giving out, like, fucking candy, she would do this terrible game where you put a, a, she had a jar full of pennies and you had to fucking scoop them out with a spoon and it's like impossible to keep the pennies on the fucking spoon coming out of the jar. So you wind up getting like no pennies and then you're like, you're also like, oh, what a fucking rip off this is. Like, fuck you, lady. Uh, so like after she'd closed the door, we'd walk down to the sidewalk and everyone would just turn in unison and throw the fucking pennies at this lady's house, <laughs> and in retrospect, I realized that this makes us horrible, horrible people, <laughs> but it was also, <laughs> it is also a fond, fond memory of, um, of my childhood, um, and it just sucks, uh, I guess that's the, the larger point I was trying to, to make before when I was kind of spacing out there, is that it, it sucks that, like, the more they have trunk or treat and the more that they, you know, parents keep their kids in the night before th uh, Halloween, even though they're out causing, you know, uh, you know, some problems, you know, as long as they don't fucking kill anybody. But uh, they're just like a roading childhood and, and taking the fun out of it. And I feel like doing that, you're just uh, the kids are having these like really boring kind of uh, homogenized upbringings where they just all they do is just kind of stare into a fucking screen and, uh, it's, it's depriving them of, of, uh, life experience and fun, and it's making them, uh, depressed and, like, scared of the world because they don't experience anything, so, uh, you know, fuck you guys, let them, let them go out, let them throw some eggs and fucking toilet paper, some shit, throw a fucking rock through a window, it's not that bad, people have fucking done worse, what else? Um, uh, yeah, it's, uh, there's, uh, no... No West Village Halloween parade uh, either. I went last year for work, and uh, it was a lot of fun. Although the homeless are walking the streets of New York City, and uh, in very zombie-like fashion, uh, sort of, it, it has turned into sort of a dystopian wasteland. 
Um, so there may not be costumes and floats this year, but I guess it still will be uh, an absolute fucking freak show. And I feel like the term ghost town really is particularly apropos when talking about uh, uh, New York City uh, this weekend. And like I feel like every time I go on Twitter, there are people like, oh, New York City is not a fucking ghost town. Or like they're like scoffing at the idea that it's a ghost town. Um, and then you walk down the streets in Midtown, which is supposed to be like the most crowded, fucking busy part of the city. And you don't see a soul other than like a vagrant taking a shit in a phone booth. So I feel like, yeah, that like that qualifies it as uh, as a ghost town. And uh, people, they'll, they'll take a picture of a couple eating dinner outside at like a bistro and they'll post it. But they'll crop out the panhandler threatening the people at the other table with a razor blade. And they'll be like, see, everything in the, it's fine, it's fine, woo! And it's like, hey, they're gonna, they're gonna get hepatitis from that guy. Fuck COVID. Um, like, I feel like at the rate New York City is, is going in, in 2020, some weird shit's gonna go down on Halloween. Like, ISIS is going to pour some kind of toxic sludge mixed with human cum into the sewers, and the rats are going to morph into, you know, indestructible, giant, uh, half, fucking half-man, half-rat monsters that tear the city to shreds. I feel like that's coming. Hopefully they eat de Blasio first. Fuck. Sorry. Lost my... Lost my spot in my notes. The hat's slipping down. <laughs> we're almost, we're almost out of here. <laughs> Thank you for if you've stuck with me thus far. Your, your absolute sweethearts. Um, what else? Oh yeah, we are talking football every week. Um, you know, and honestly, I almost don't even want to. It's so fucking depressing. The uh, the Cowboys lost again. They absolutely suck. Uh, Zeke can't keep his hands on the football. The defense can't fucking tackle anyone. Dak Prescott, like, snapped his fucking leg in half. Uh, I accidentally hit the fucking search thing. <laughs> uh, don't don't get high before you podcast, kids. Um, fucking Andy Dalton. Uh, they got their asses kicked by the Redskins this afternoon. Andy Dalton came in and got absolutely murdered. So they put the fucking uh, Italian stallion, uh, what's his name, Ben DiNucci. For, he, they... <laughs> playing quarterback uh, out of noted offensive juggernaut James Madison University. Um, and unless they sign somebody, he is the projected uh, starter for next week, I guess. Um, I don't know. At least the entire division sucks. Uh, Daniel, <laughs> Daniel Jones tackled himself after an 80-yard run the other night. Um, so... Yeah, the N the NFC East is just like this giant fucking Keystone Cops operation. They should be denied, I feel like. They should be denied a playoff team this year. Like they shouldn't you shouldn't be allowed to go through the regular season like that and then be allowed into the fucking playoffs. Um <laughs> There should like yeah, like a, an extra team from another division should go in. There, there's just no no fucking way. Um and speaking of football, uh, I do want to say, you can't see it on the live stream right now, because I have the wolf mask on. Oh, I guess I can take, it is an anniversary we're celebrating here. Taking the wolf mask off. Oh my, wow. It... Whew, sorry, now I have to acclimate to the light. <laughs> um, I should, uh, I should wish a, uh, a happy 20... 20 year anniversary to uh to my right eye here the uh, the the very lowered <laughs> right eyelid especially now because I'm all uh, I'm all as they say cheebed up um it is uh it's 20 years Halloween two th uh, year 2000 it was my sophomore year of high school and uh we were walking off the practice field and we were making fun of our buddy uh our buddy Corey and my <laughs> my uh fucking uh, my buddy Dave says, <laughs> says it was <laughs> little boys guard your assholes. Corey's on the prowl, <laughs> and he swung around with his fucking helmet and blasted me 
and this I I my buddy Dave stepped out of the way. I do I wasn't paying attention. I stepped right into it, and boom, right in the side of the face. And uh, the eyelid has been uh, a droopy motherfucker ever since. I got the scar right here, um, and uh, I love it. Uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't be me without it. Um, I've thought about getting it fixed before, but yeah, you can't work out for like a month afterwards. They don't want you to tear the uh, the stitches or whatever. I guess, and I'm I feel like I'm too much of a meathead for that. Uh, maybe someday. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm able to get pussy though, so it's not. I feel like on that end, it's not a uh, not a big deal. You know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, I just did want to, uh, want to wish this little mug a, a happy, happy anniversary coming up. It'll be next, uh, this coming Saturday. I don't know if I'm going to be podcasting that day or not. So I just wanted to in the, uh, because it did happen on Halloween. I figured it should be mentioned in the Halloween spooktacular. Uh, anyway, uh, I hope that turned out as a decent, uh, episode. I'm sorry. I was, uh, High as shit in a wolf mask, struggling to check out my notes. I don't know what the fuck was going on. Um, what I do know is that I have some uh, uh, some special extra content for you guys this week. If uh, you're going to be able to find it at facebook.com slash the savage crew, which of course is where this uh, this podcast big video live stream from. And uh, on my uh, the savage crew YouTube page, um, I'll, I'll put it up. Well, it is a, the first one's already up. It's... Uh, it's a little uh, Halloween content uh, I shot with uh, my uncle the other day, um, so I'll share that to the Facebook page and uh, it's, a, it's a YouTube video. So when you're there, please uh, go ahead and, and subscribe to the to the YouTube page. I'm trying to get those uh, get those numbers up and maybe turn it into something. Um, so yeah, Facebook.com/slash/TheSavageCrew, uh, Twitter at Mike Montone at Gary underscore Moiler, M-O-Y-L-E-R. Those are the uh, the social platforms. Uh, and definitely, definitely check out the Facebook thing. Check out my uncle. He's, uh, fucking, he's a fucking weirdo. He's fucking hilarious. Uh, and he is, uh, he's inspired a great... If, if you like this podcast, if you like the kind of stupid, weird shit I get into on, on here... Um, then you'll, you'll enjoy, uh, my, my uncle Tommy. He's, uh, he's the, the try, you know, the, the inspiration behind a lot of what I've done. Uh, like he was showing me, uh, like raunchy fucking comedies when I was in third grade. I think he sat me down to watch Animal House for the first time. So, uh, you would, this show would not exist without that, uh, that influence. So every year we get together, we make some Halloween content and, uh, he's a really funny, creative guy. So uh, please check that out, facebook.com slash the savage crew. And like I said, it'll be links to, to the YouTube page. So uh, be sure to, uh, to subscribe on YouTube. And I'll pop, the, uh, I'll pop the first one into the comment section of uh, this Facebook live stream as well. So it'll make, make it really, really easy for you, for, for you guys to, uh, to check it out. And uh, I think that is, uh, that is that. Thank y'all for tuning in. Stop this fucking thing.